What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys had a great day so far. Well, today I'm just going to continue my 2014 beauty favorite series that I started last time. So for all of you guys who have not checked out the first video, which you definitely should, I'm going to link the video right here in front of my face so you guys can check it out. Otherwise, I'm going to put the link down below for you guys in the description box. So this video will be only about makeup. So I hope you are interested as always. And if you are, stay tuned. 2014 has seemed to be a particularly lip product heavy year for me. As I was checking out new textures, I was very much into being very experimental with different colors and I was shopping a lot of lipsticks to say the least. And I'm going to start out with these two genius products in my opinion. These are both by Bourjois and they're called the Rouge Edition Velvet Liquid Lipsticks that I have in the shades number seven, Nudist, and number one, which is called Personne Ne Rouge. The formulation of these liquid lipsticks is one of a kind. I think I never stumbled upon a better looking and feeling semi-matte liquid lipstick in a really, really long time or even ever because these feel incredibly lightweight. You basically don't feel them at all. I'm wearing the nudist shade today on my lips and on my cheeks as I like to use a lot of lip products in general as blushes. They just work so, so great in just looking very skin-like and as these feel very light and not too powdery or not too drying, I think they're perfect to use as blushes too. They have some really, really bold, brave colors, like really vibrant colors that you probably don't wear every day, at least I don't. But I like these colors, as I said, to use as blushes and I'm sure to get more of these shades and yeah, highly recommend it. My most used lip combination of 2014, hands down, had to consist of a By Terry lipstick and a Shiseido lip liner. So the By Terry lipstick is one of a kind in my opinion. I think I really never stumbled upon a better looking nude on my lips. This is the Rouge Terribly in the shade 100, Terribly Nude. A nude that is kind of difficult to describe in my opinion. It's not your drugstore nude where it's too beige or too rosy, too pale, too dark, whatever. It is, to me personally, my perfect nude. My lips but better lip color. I think it works very well on my um, fair skin. It doesn't show up too dark or too light. I love this so, so much. And yes, By Terry products are very expensive. To me personally, this was a splurge, but it is so, so worth it in my opinion. And I'm definitely going to get more of these lipsticks. It's really hard to describe how they feel on the lips, but again, this is a product that you don't feel at all actually. They feel very satiny and lightweight and um, not obvious on the lips at all. They blend in into the lip structure uh, better than I have ever seen in a lip product like this. The lip liner I was referring to earlier is by Shiseido. This one is one of the smoothing lip pencils in the shade RD702. The cool thing on these lip liners is that you get a pretty decent lip brush and the product itself is perfection too. I think these lip liners last a pretty long time. They're not too waxy. This is what I liked about this one in particular. So you don't have to literally scratch your lips just to achieve a little bit of color. They glide on very easily. They stay, they look gorgeous. They don't emphasize dry lips either. And I sometimes, well, a lot of the times I use this one just as a whole um, lip product on my entire lips and maybe use a gloss on top or just let it be and uh, I love this one. This is a really high quality lip liner that I can highly recommend. So this crayon product is by Bobbi Brown. It's one of her so-called art sticks in the shade Dusty Pink. And it's a perfect color description, a classic dusty pink color. It's not too warm, it's not too cold. Um, I like about these ones that they are a fairly dry and very lightweight formula. They definitely stick to the lips very well. They last. I like the shade range with these ones too. You don't get a lot of colors, though the ones that you get are just beautiful. And Dusty Pink is just one of those everyday colors that I tend to gravitate to 
a lot. So very highly recommend it. The cool thing about the art sticks is that you get a sharpener with it in the same package, which is great because these are a little bit fatter than your usual crayons. That is definitely very convenient and very thoughtful Bobby Brown. And the other one is by Maybelline. It's the Color Drama 630 Nude Perfection Lip Crayon. It's like almost a caramel shade, I think. So in conclusion, these are so going to be purchased in different colors because I just, I just love the convenience. See, they're fairly small, like especially compared to the Bobbi Brown ones. You don't get a lot of product with these ones. However, the quality is there, the convenience is there, and I just love myself some crayon products as, as a general. So both are highly recommended. All right, let's talk about base products. As you guys know, this is like one of my favorite topics. Uh, foundations, tinted moisturizers are my jam. So I have two products to share with you guys that I use particularly often in 2014. Starting with the obvious, this is a no-brainer. You guys are probably totally sick of me saying it over and over again. It is just the boss under all foundations in my opinion. If you are dry skinned, like very dry skinned, maybe normal skin, then this is a gorgeous, healthy looking, fairly glowy foundation that covers up redness, um, like darker spots, blemishes very, very well. It's not a full coverage foundation per se. It's obviously dependent on how much you use. Um, I personally like to go for maybe one pump and I'm pretty much good to go. My skin just looks so radiant and healthy and pretty much nine out of ten times when you guys ask me what foundation are you using what is it do you use a primer i don't use primer it's just this foundation i like to use this one with brushes as well as the classic beauty blender it's amazing very highly recommended the other base product is a tinted moisturizer by nars it is the pure radiant tinted moisturizer with spf 30 I'm in the shade Finland Light 1. This one is more of a yellow-toned tinted moisturizer. It's a little bit more yellow-toned than the uh, Bourjois one, which I personally don't mind as I have a lot of redness in my skin that I want to cancel out. So to me, this is very handy. I like the texture. I like the finish of this one. It doesn't look too glowy. I mean, after application, you're definitely going to look more shiny, but maybe after 10 minutes, it starts to set into a semi dewy finish. I very much like this one and I can highly recommend it if you yet again have dry skin, normal skin. Moving on to eye products, I have five to share with you guys. And I'm going to start with this little gem right here. This is by Rimmel. It's the Glam Eyes HD number 22 Bricks and Brown Eyeshadow Palette. And as you can see, it has five shades. Four out of the five shades are shimmery. And this one here in the corner is matte. To me personally, it's one of the nicest palettes that I have ever tried shade range wise, as this is more of a very warm toned red based palette. And I gravitate towards to these shades a lot, pretty much most of the time, because I just like to emphasize the green in my eyes. And these shades sure do so. I like this shade in the middle, especially this like brick toned red shimmery color. It's gorgeous. I think you are missing out if you haven't tried this palette so far. I mean, it's drugstore, it's super affordable. The shades are great, the quality is great and I highly recommend them. The other eyeshadow palette that I was using nonstop is the infamous Lorac Pro palette that I feel like everyone in their dog was raving about, but quite rightly so, this palette is indeed gorgeous, very high quality. The shades are buttery soft and pigmented. They blend in very well and the shade selection itself, one of the best shade ranges that I have ever seen in one palette. What I like about this one in particular as you guys probably all know by now, but I'm still going to mention it, is that the first row is completely matte and the second one has some gorgeous shimmery shades, which makes this palette to me even more perfect because on a day-to-day -day basis, I personally don't tend to use 
too many shimmery shades. So the matte ones do come in use a lot for me personally. And that is why I can so highly recommend it. If you have eyelids, you need this. The next eyeshadow product that I adored in 2014. And I adored it so much to the point that I have now increased my expectations towards cream products because they are pots of gold. They're by Bourjois. Yet again, Bourjois has completely blew it out of the water in 2014 for me. Every single product that I tried from their range is on point, high quality, works. They never seem to disappoint me. Now this one is a rosy shimmery color perfect for every day i love those kind of shades when i want to go to work and don't want to look like i have too much on my face they feel lightweight you are not going to perceive them too much they have a decent shimmer but still they just kind of miraculously blend into your skin texture without emphasizing lines or dryness or whatever you have on your eyelids as far as i'm concerned and therefore I'm definitely calling them a must-have product for 2014 too. All right, the last two eyeshadow products I have to show you guys, which one of them is by Gosh, and this is one of their Forever Eyeshadow, Metallic Eyeshadow Stick in Waterproof. I have it in the shade 01 Silver Rose. These hold on to your eyelids like there's no tomorrow. They don't crease, smear, move, whatever. They are super, super long lasting. Um, I think the color selection is gorgeous too. They're very shimmery, like metallic-y finish eyeshadows. And I have gotten a lot of use out of that one. Silver Rose is like, um, like a taupey silver color. And yeah, love this one. And the last eyeshadow stick that I had to show you guys, I'm sure you have seen this one on my channel as well. This is the infamous Laura Mercier Caviar Stick and I have it in the shade Coca. This is my all-time favorite shade of the entire line that she offers. And trust me, these do not move. They stick to your lids just like the gosh ones. This format with the eyeshadow sticks, just like the ones with the lip crayons, is so convenient in my opinion. I just love to use these kind of products on a day-to-day -day basis. So definitely these caviar sticks by Laura Mercier as well as the gosh ones are highly, highly recommended. Moving on to blushes. And usually I would show you guys at least like four or five of them because I'm a blush addict. I think blush really changes a lot about the structure of my face. I don't look as flat anymore. Blushes are definitely one of my favorite things in makeup. But consider all of the lip products that I mentioned before as blushes because I use them like that a lot of the times. But I have two dedicated blush products to share with you guys, of course. So the first one is by Chanel. This one is their Le Blush Creme de Chanel. So it is a cream to powder blush in the shade 64 Inspiration. This one is a fairly warm toned rosy shade. It's not too pale. I'm just very drawn to these kind of shades a lot because they look very natural and healthy looking on my skin. What I like about the formulation with the Chanel cream to powder blushes is that they don't set fully to a powdery finish to the point where I feel like when I have dry skin on my cheeks that this cream to powder is going to emphasize that. So that is a great plus point. I just love the finish of them. They look very skin-like, very lightweight. They're not glossy or um, light reflective at all. The other blush that I used loads as well is by The Balm. This is their Fret Boy blush and it might not look like a lot in the packaging though the finish and just the quality of this blush is really really good. I like the color of this one. It's more like a rose with a coral undertone. This one is not shimmery at all. Same goes to the Chanel one. Both of them are matte but I just love the finish of this one. The color is great. When it comes to concealers one of my very few demands towards these products is that they're not supposed to set into a more powdery finish so obviously I don't want a drying product especially for my my under eye area. I want one that is more on the creamy yet thin side so that it's easily to blend it to the skin and make it more skin-like looking. And also I want it to be more hydrating so that 
uh, all of the fine lines that I have going on are not emphasized any further. So I have found two great products that definitely cover all of my demands, which I'm going to start with this one. It's the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I love this one to bits and pieces. It is now my staple concealer in my collection. It is creamy, high covering, it doesn't dry out the skin. It looks fairly skin-like. It feels very comfortable on the skin too. It doesn't emphasize dryness at all. It's one of the most well-rounded concealers that I have stumbled upon in a long time. The other one that I was using for years, on the other hand, is the L'Oreal Lumi Magique concealer. That is more of a highlighting one, so it has some light reflecting particles to it to give myself some more radiance and awakeness around my eyes especially. So yeah, love this one a lot. My absolute favorite application tool for foundation always has been, always will be the classic beauty blender. There is nothing equivalent to this one on the market. And trust me, I have tried so many different ones and none of them come even close to the quality and the finish that this one gives me with any kind of foundation. It is such a pleasure to use because it's so convenient. You just soak it underneath water and then tap your foundation, cream foundation, liquid foundation, whatever you want to use on your skin and it looks flawless. It looks like skin, it doesn't emphasize dryness, it doesn't disrupt primer or whatever you have underneath. It's perfect in my opinion. Yes, it is expensive. I mean, it is just a sponge and you're paying like $20 or something, which is definitely a lot. But to me personally, it's one of those essential items in my makeup everyday life. It is so highly recommended to you guys. If you have not tried it out so far, you are missing out for sure. It is by far my new all-time favorite bronzer for sure. It's the RMS bronzer in Buriti and I think it's their only shade but it works so perfectly on my super fair skin. It doesn't look orange or patchy or dirty or anything. It gives you that supermodel glowy, natural looking tan skin. And therefore I've been using this one quite a lot. I still like to use it just to warm up my face. It doesn't look obvious. All in all, I just love the RMS cream range so much. And the Buriti bronzer has now become my all time favorite bronzer. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video even though it was super long. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as that would help me out so, so much. And also don't forget to check out my social media. I'm super active on Instagram and Twitter. Everything will be linked down below in the info box as always. So I wish you guys a beautiful day and I see you in my next video. Bye.